Hello everybody, welcome to episode 2 of the Boys in Blue podcast. And in this episode, we are going to talk about Chelsea's 4 0 win away against FK Krasnodar in the Champions League last midweek. And our week and our 3 0 win over Burnley at the weekend. And the lead up to our game versus Rennes. In the Champions League. And to give you a heads up. This episode is filmed. Before we have played Rennes. In the Champions League. So it's the lead up to that game. And every episode is coming out. Every Wednesday. So. And if you do like this uh, podcast. Like sub, subscribe. It'll be handy. And let's get up. To at least let's do a target. For you guys to say. Let's get up to 100 thumbs up. On this one. And let's get in to the podcast, starting with our 4-0 win over FK Krasnodar of Russia. And for me, it was a very good performance. Um, first off, could have been better. Krasnodar had their chances, like they hit the bar. Mendy was doing good saves. Zuma even put himself on the line and nearly had to go off. And then he got put on a stretcher for, for, the, for putting himself on on his body on the line for the cause. Uh, the team we brought out to play Krasnodar were, was as follows: was Mendy in goal, Asprey Quetta, Rudiger, Zuma, Chilwell, Jorginho, Kovacic, Ziyech, Havertz, hudson Adoy, and Werner on the bench with Caballero, Z- Ziga, uh, Reese James, Tomori, Christian, Emerson, Kante, Mount, Pulisic, Giroud, Abraham. And for me, that was not a bad performance from the boys. Not a bad performance. The first goal was a bit of a slice of good fortune. Shot by Hudson Adoy. Straight at the keeper. Keeper could have done better with it. And it was just a keeper's mistake that the ball got past him and into the back of the net. And we were lucky to be 1 0 up at that stage. They go into half time 1 0 up. And I thought to myself, it's a good first half. We're good to be in front. But it wasn't the best. Second half, we came out a bit more beat. Somehow, didn't came out the better. Uh, Krasnodar were actually having the better chances to hit the crossbar at one stage. And I thought to myself, I was thinking to myself, what the hell is, what the hell is going on? Are we, have we completely changed in, in 15 minutes after going out, finishing one half and going into another? Just completely changed. Completely changed the team did. And for me, then ZH had a really good game. So did Havertz. So did um, Timo Werner. And I will say, Jorginho, when we did have a penalty at 0 0, Jorginho hit the post. And he also hit the post, then the back of the keeper, and then went away from goal. And for me, I was thinking at that point, Jorginho needs to go off penalties. Needs to go off penalties altogether. Because what he did. Is it's the second time this season in like a big game where he's had missed a penalty. And it's that hot skip and the jump that he does that somehow can work, but this time it didn't. But we got a penalty in the second half. Who stepped up? T. Werner and showed Jorginho, who has sat on the bench, how to take a penalty. And I just blast it as hard as you can. And the keeper will not want to get in your way. Because if he does, his head will be taken off. And he blasted it in for 2-0. Hakim Ziyech then got his first goal for Chelsea. What a finish from Hakim Ziyech. And also he was mad. No, Mendy, I think, was mad at the match. That I think mad at the match was, um, if I was correct, Hakim Ziyech. And then the fourth goal was scored by Christian Pulisic, who I think deserved it for his performance. And I will say, as soon as we changed the entire midfield um, near the end of the second half, we scored three goals. The team completely changed. We went, we changed the entire midfield from one midfield to another, and the team completely changed. It completely changed, and it was just an absolute shock that uh, within like seven, seventy minutes and beyond, we were a different Chelsea. Seventy minutes and before, we were not as good as we were. But we got the win anyway. 4-0 over Krasnodar. And bring on Rens on Tuesday. Um, next one was Burnley. Away. 
which for me was a good performance and the lineup for this game was different it was Mendy Reese James Thiago Silva Zuma Chilwell Chilwell Mount Kante Havertz Ziyech Abram Pulisic but Pulisic did pull up an injury during the warm-up so Timo Werner stepped in in his place on the bench was Ru was Caballero Rudiger Aspiquare, Jorginho, hudson Adoy, Werner, who then replaced Pulisic in the starting 11. So Ziegler, or Ziegler, our 19-year-old under 23 keeper came in. And Olivier Giroud start, was on the bench. And for me, we played very well. We were a very, we were very attacking-wise. We did absolutely brilliant. We, we were, we were fruitless. We were, we were, this is the Chelsea side that we were we were looking at seeing a couple of games ago. And for me, this shows that this team is now gelling. The team is gelling. The the players are get uh, are finally being cohesent because some of the goals and the way they were scored were just superb. With superb. And also we made Burnley have zero, zero attempts on goal the whole 90. Burnley only had four shots on goal, on Mendy's goal the whole game and none were on target. So that's what we want from Chelsea. And that's why we were brilliant. And with Mendy in goals, kept four clean sheets in a row, had the chance of a fifth against Rennes on Tuesday, which is the club we bought him from. Theoretically, how weird is that? Had a chance to go and get his fifth clean sheet in a row. That would be an absolute amazing for us. We he's matched Mendy has played less games than Kepper and has matched Kepper for the amount of clean sheets in 2020. Unbelievable. In a short space of time. Mendy, I salute you. Um the first goal. Unbelievable. Hakim Ziyech. The play between Reese James. Uh, Werner to Ziyech to Abraham. Boy, it was just outrageous. Then the uh, Timo Werner goal, the the um, Zuma header, the crossing from Mount, Zuma with the header. He literally got his ball of a head onto it and I thought, he, broke, he could have broken the net. And that was just outrageous. Outrageous. And then the uh, third goal where it was just superb where it was. Reese James to, to Ziyech to Werner. 3-0. We did have a fourth goal. Did rule it out for offside. Which would have been uh, benching well. Uh, passed the ball through to Giroud. It was unfortunate offside. But sorry that oh, it, it could have been a 4-0 game. And we could have scored a lot more in that game. And I can't be any be proud of the boys for playing the way we did. And to, to, to summarise it. Thiago Silva... And Zuma and Reese James. That is amazing. To be in a defence and not let a team have a shot on target and only have, have four shots the whole game shows that this is our best back four by far. It's Reese James, Thiago Silva, Zuma, and Ben Chilwell. That has to be the main back four. Put down in the comment section what you think our best back four is. My one is Reese James, Thiago Silva, Kurt Zuma, Benji. Well, that, that has to be the back four we go with from now on. That's got to be our main back four. Because to go and play a Premier League game and only let your side have four shots and none on target shows the difference. The difference. That back four deserves all the... Oh, this is a... Deserves all the praise in the world. Deserves all the accomplishments. They have achieved something that I haven't seen from a Chelsea defence in a while. And that is restrict a team to zero shots on target. That is hardly ever done. Because in the last few years, our defences were leaking goals left right and body centre. And now we're just... And we've managed to step aside and we have four shots. And none on target. I'm sorry I'm saying zero on shots on target. But it still stuns me. A Chelsea team has done that. How, when was the last time a Chelsea side has gone and played a side and, and they've not had zero on target? 
It's been years. Years, I would say years. Years. Oh, my God. That team. That team that played on Saturday deserves all the credit in the world. But that back four of Reece James, Thiago Silva and Zuma. And Jewel. And Ben Jewel. That should be the regular back four. The regular back four. We have found our... We have found the best back... The centre-back pairing in Chelsea. Which is Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma. And also, put down in the comment section who you think is Chelsea's best centre-back pairing. For me, it's Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma. And do you guys think is there any place in the back four for Cesar, our captain Cesar Aspiriqueta, in the back four of Rhys James, Thiago Silva, Kurt Zuma and Ben Chigwell, who you guys would replace if you guys would have put in Cesar Aspiriqueta in and see where and what you would do. That'd be interesting. And also, Havertz is starting to play now. Timo Werner is starting to play. Ziyech is starting. It's all clicking on gas. I just think um, we've got one problem. And for me, it's a midfield problem. Uh, and I think it's the only problem we have. I think we've slightly sorted out the mid the uh, defensive problem. I think we've got a slight midfield problem. I will... Ask you guys this question. And another one for you guys to put down in the comment section for this one. Do you guys think in the comment section below that Jorginho is, is basically the player that's causing the midfield problems at the moment? The one player that is the odd one out of this team that I think when we are playing well... Jorginho seems to go back too many times. He doesn't go forward enough. He 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 dally, dilly dallies on the ball too much, and I think he's the re some of the reasons why some stuff on our team it goes wrong, and I think it goes through Jorginho. And I just think Jorginho's a bit slow, and every time he seems to want to go forward, he seems to go back on himself every time. He's, n he's never confident of going forward, and I'll say that again. On occasions, Jorginho will bomb forward. But it's so much regular that he'll bomb backwards too many times. Too many times. And I think he's a liability. Do you think? Do you guys think Jorginho is the liability of this team at this present moment in time? Because I think um, Mount's doing alright at the moment this season. It's just that some fans are saying he's being overused. But each team's got to have game time. You've got to accept that. Um... For me, if you were to say Jorginho at the side and then you put Kovacic with Kante, you have that pairing. That goes well in hand. I think our best two midfield midfield pairings is Kovacic and Kante. That's the best midfield partnership we have because them two bomb forward. So, if, so basically, if Kante bombs forward, Jord, uh, Kovacic will stay back to hold the back line up be in front of the defenders when Kante goes upfield. So it leaves that no one that means everyone's got to go past Kovacic to get to the defenders. And that's what I love. That's what I love about it. I love that the fact that we got the speed in the Hakim Ziyech and Pulisic that can bomb up the wings because them two have just speed and the hell of speed. But we're going into the game on Tuesday with when you guys watch this we would have already have played Rennes in the Champions League. But hopefully we get the three points and hopefully it all goes well. But it depends on what team Frank Lampard picks to go against Rennes and everything else. Um, it'd be interesting because we went into the first game at home against Seville where we draw 0-0. I hopefully we don't do that again. But if we go with the same way that we did against Seville, but Instead of defending very well, we defend well, but also score at the other end uh, and everything else and score goals. So if we defend well, but score goals, we can get the result. I'll be happy. And then, and everything else will be hunky-dory in this point, but we will be doing all right. It'll be, hopefully we can get the win against Ren. It just 
Rain's not going to be easy. I think, if I am mistaken, the last time I checked with Ren, I think they were second, second in the French league behind PSG. They were given a lot of teams uh, the 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 worries, but Ren are coming into the game with Chelsea of a back of a two-one defeat to Andre in League One. So they they so their run of games was a loss to Andre in the league, a one-nil defeat to Seville, and they have won two-one on to Brest. So they're coming into this game on the back of a win, but they are still liability of conceding a goal, goal or two, and they are coming to this game in their league. They are third in the league. They are three points off of PSG in first place. Reign have won five games, drawn three, and only lost one, and played nine games. They've won not five out of their nine games, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough ask. It's gonna be a tough ask because we're facing a team who are third in their league, so they have got something good about them. But we gotta watch out. We gotta be worrying. We, um, but by the looks of things, most of their points have been at home. So away from home, they are. They haven't lost away from home yet in the league. So it's so it's gonna be tricky. But we can go. I think we can do it. But. But we just gotta watch out for certain players and just hope it goes all being well. But like like I say, not not if 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 Chelsea fans were gonna go and say this game's gonna be easy, no it ain't. This team is third in the league. These are third in the French league. Three points by PSG. So they so they're no there's gonna be nobody's mugs. They're gonna give us a hard game, and I know they're gonna give us a hard game. And we've got someone in midfield who has played against us many, many times before in the Premier League. Steven Anzonzi, who is an ex-Premier League player himself. He's played against us several times for Blackburn, Stoke. And all that. And so he's going to have experience playing against us. So he could you, so you might tell him a lot about us. But we still got to be careful. It's interesting because a lot of their uh, strikers I have never I have never heard of before. So these are all gonna be so not there's not really any well known strikers to be watching out for. But like I say, we've still got to be wary that there is still still going to be difficult to beat. But also, for for Rens coming into the game against Chelsea, are are they going to have one eye on playing PSG at the weekend? That's going to be tricky for them. Can we take advantage of that? Because we play Sheffield United, who are bottom of the Premier League. When Rens are playing PSG, you are top of League Earn. So they might want to rest. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Ren team comes out of, comes out as. If he's not going to miss players because of the big game with PSG, because it could mean if Rennes going to beat PSG, Rennes could go top of League One. So, so we could be thinking in that way. But then, in a couple of weeks' time, we go to Rennes in our next game, so that will be handy. But it's not going to be easy, and we just got to be. On the positive side of him, we're coming off of a back of three wins, three draws, and two wins. So we haven't lost in five games. We are unbeaten in five. So it's a good thing all round. So yeah, and I'm also gonna put some. Yeah, 
I'm gonna tell you guys some shock that has happened today. Man City have beaten Chelsea 3-2 in the FA Youth Cup Final. The team or the youth team which was literally so dominant for Chelsea. Chelsea used to win it year after year after year and it's the first time in such a long time that Chelsea have not won the trophy. And it's just unfortunate for us that unfortunately our youngsters have lost but hopefully get their chins up and go on and do what they can in the uh, Premier League 2 and do, and do us proud in that. But Um, think yeah, because our next game Sheffield United. I think it's Sheffield United next, if I'm not mistaken. We play, we play Sheffield United on Saturday. In a couple of weeks' time, we play Newcastle United. Then it is Rens in the Champions League. So, episode three will be reviewing the Rens game in the Champions League. We'll also be reviewing the Sheffield United game at home in the Premier League. And we'll also be re looking up because it's going to be during the international. So we're going to be doing one episode that is going to be done during the international break to review the games between Wren and Sheffield United. And also do lead up to Newcastle United away. Then... We basically won't have, so it'll be next when Monday I'll film the next one for you guys. Then the next, that will be reviewing Sheffield United, Wren, and, and leading up to Newcastle on the 21st. The next uh, episode will be filmed on the 20, 23rd of November. When we'll be reviewing all them. And that will be coming out on the 25th. So your next episode after this. Your next episode after this. Which will be episode 3. Won't. That will be coming out. Next week. Episode 4. That will be filmed. on the Episode 4 will be filmed. On the 23rd of November. Because of the international break. And we'll be coming out on the 25th, where we will be reviewing our game. We'll be basically reviewing Sheffield United, Wren, and previewing and leading up to New... Oh, I'm talking about Newcastle United. No, yeah. Yeah, we'll be previewing that and then and stuff like that. But, like I say... Hope you guys have enjoyed episode 2 of the Boys in Blue podcast. Like, sub, subscribe. Put it down in the comment section what you guys think of the podcast. If you guys like it, give me your feedback. And also tell me what you guys thought of the two results against Krasnodar and against Burnley. And tell me down in the section if what you guys think of Rens. Do you guys think it's been a good game? and everything else and like sub subscribe to get the bell notification we get the post so you get an updates on the watch alongs the live previews and all that jazz and blue is the color and 